Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another one. Today, I wanted to talk about the snowmobile I bought this year from Craigslist. For two, I know this, the title says 2K, but I bought it for 1,900 bucks. I want to walk through it. I think it's probably pretty close to the ultimate snowmobile setup and uh, why I chose a snowmobile over a four-wheeler for ice fishing. So this is a 2001 Polaris Sport Touring 550 fan-cooled engine. So the reason I got the fan-cooled engine over the liquid-cooled engine is typically during the early ice season and even the late ice season, we don't normally have a ton of snow on the ice. And with the liquid-cooled engines, you really need a lot of snow or you need to install those scratchers um, that put ice shards into the track that go into the heat exchanger. With the fan-cooled engines, because I'm not really going very fast, I'm towing something most of the time, uh, these are much more suitable for your ice fishing to just put it around the lake or the river. I'm on the river right now. Typically, you're not going faster than 10 or 15, maybe 20 miles an hour at most if you're towing something like I am now. But uh, that is the reason I chose a fan-cooled versus a liquid-cooled. The reason I chose a snowmobile versus a four-wheeler is because the past couple years we have gotten some deeper snow and I've seen a lot of guys with four-wheelers actually get stuck. The snowmobiles seem to just rip right through that powder and uh, get to their fishing spot. So, um, decided to go with a snowmobile this year. Also, it is a little less expensive to go with a snowmobile if you get a used one. This is a 2001, so it's 20 years old. Um, it was in actually pretty decent shape. I had to put probably about 500 bucks into it with a uh, carb kit and some other things, new sliders, new... Uh, wear bars on it. Other than that, not a big deal. Figure probably somewhere between $2,500 to $3,000 if you are buying a snowmobile and trying to set it up fully for ice fishing. You can get sleds for under a thousand bucks, but if you want something like this is a two up, so it's a two person, it's got a, a rack on the back to be able to load gear and install a big box like you see behind me. Um, so you can actually carry a ton of your gear. These two ups typically are somewhere between two grand to maybe 2,500 bucks on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace. All right, so let's just start at the front is what you got here. Um, I did have to actually get a bumper for it because it, it was missing a bumper. I think that was only like 35 bucks. Installed it myself, super easy. Highly, highly recommend auger straps. I will link these below and uh, super sturdy. I mean, I don't have any issues with it. I was a little concerned because this isn't really thick plastic at all, or whatever this is made out of. Um, but I haven't had any issues with it. This is the StrikeMaster 24 volt lithium. I believe it's like seven or eight pounds. Um, if you got a heavier auger, I think it'll be okay. I've seen a lot of guys mount their heavier augers this way and uh, they seem pretty stable. So that's the auger mount. I did have to install the mirrors so that I can see if anything falls off the sled as I'm towing it, I was kind of tired of looking over my shoulder. Um, I bought a little kind of case right here so I could put my keys, my cell phone or something. The one thing which I actually left in the garage, the Garmin GPS map unit, I actually just take it off my boat. I bought a uh, second little um, mount like this for the boat. Took this off the boat and just run a basic wire. Hopefully nothing falls off. So this is the cable, I just ran it right to the battery down there, put a fuse in there. And uh, the one thing I will say that I might change up is try to add a second battery for that unit. It seems like if I use this unit for more than like two or three hours without the snowmobile running, um, the battery kind of goes dead and the electric start doesn't work. Luckily the pull cord starts second pull, so it's not a big deal, but um, I would recommend a second battery. If you're running a lot of electronics, this is also where I put uh, my ice fishing, the little puck transducer or the cone transducer, just slide it into that pocket and you can fish right from the snowmobile. So like I said, there is an electric start on it. Um, highly, highly recommend getting something with a reverse, either the, the mechanical pullout reverse or the electric reverse. It's a lot easier getting it off a trailer. It's a lot easier getting it off a, a trailer like that when you have reverse. So highly, highly recommend reverse. Um, if you have the chance to get a two-up, two-ups are really nice. Usually it's a bit of a longer track, which helps in deeper snow. Also, you can carry your second person there. But the main reason I wanted to get something like this, it's got a built-in cage in the back here. 
And I know a lot of guys actually weld an additional kind of cage on the back and mount two of these boxes to it. Uh, right now I just got, let's see if I can film this. I just got aluminum angle brackets. I got one on each side. Uh, these are, I think these are eighth inch thick. One on each side and just hex bolts pinching it through and pinching it together. I'll show you from the inside here. Yeah, there we go. So those are just, these are just hex bolts with washers on each side, just pinching it down into the aluminum angle. Nothing too complicated. This, I was searching for this for a while, but I did find it. These are made by, I think it's pronounced Contico or Contico. Extreme tough. This is the 53 gallon, 53 gallon capacity. There's 36, it's almost 37 inches in length. 22 plus and then 20 inches high so it carries a ton of stuff i'm going to show you how much gear i can actually fit in that in just a second here then i mounted these rod holders again i'll link everything down below nice little rod holder setup carry a couple rods the one thing i might install actually two things i might install you could probably install rod holders on the top lid of this and the other thing i might do is take is get a second set of these auger mounts like this and mount it to the top so that I can throw that little pop-up hub right on top so I don't have to tow anything because you can move a, you can t cover a ton more ice if you don't have to tow a sled the one thing I did have to install the old it came with a ice fishing hitch uh, the old one is actually rusted up so I got this one I think these are like 25 bucks got that and then this it's a super easy detachable it just kind of hooks in like that um, I believe that's made by Chappelle again I will link everything below but uh, it's a nice little setup you can cover a ton of ice with it I can be so much more mobile which is usually a struggle during ice fishing which is why in the past I haven't put out a ton of ice fishing content that is because the struggle of being mobile is very real unless you can actually drive out on the ice um, Luckily on a day like today, we're getting into February here. You can actually drive out on the ice, but during this early part of the season, having a snowmobile is so helpful to cover a ton of water. Um, highly, highly recommend. Especially the one thing about these that I will say, if you trail ride, I read a lot of things about the engines burning up. If you consistently go from like 30 to 45 miles an hour on them. Um, I know there's like oil, low oil bleed kits or something you can get for them, but for just kind of putting around on the lake where I'm, I know I'm only going to go two, three miles at a time. This is perfect. Let's load this thing up. I'm going to show you how much this can fit. Now, there's a ton of room in here. I'm going to be able to get all this stuff in here and I will still have a ton more room. So camera gear. Most people probably won't have that, but that's just camera gear bag. Drone. Slide that in there fish scale for when you catch the, the monster underwater camera and then this guy I'm gonna have to set the camera down for this so there you have it this is the big live scope kit uh, but that's Summit makes. I got a separate video talking about this and the entire setup. Underwater camera in there, camera gear, drone. I could still fit, I mean, I could probably fit another two cameras in there if I had two cameras or fit whatever you want in there. These things are massive. Um, the guys that have figured out a way to weld kind of an extended bar off the back, they can fit two of these. Um, instead of perpendicular to the snowmobile, they put them in, in parallel. They can fit two of them together. You can carry a ton of gear doing that if you, uh, you know, take it to a welder and have them weld up something. But these are, these are super massive kits, and I highly recommend them. You can carry so much gear. The one modification you might want to add is mounting kind of like a bucket to the side on this side. And I might do that still so you can put a minnow bucket in here. Um, otherwise, I have put I have put a minnow bucket in here before. Kind of just moved everything. Like, put the camera gear like this, 
and you can put the middle bucket right there if you needed to. I would like to mount a fixed position GoPro mount like right here or maybe on the outside, maybe somewhere here on the hood, just for filming purposes and run kind of a, a power system to either a little fuse box or something to link it up with this unit to a single battery. That way I'm not burning up the starting battery and then I'm forced to pull start everything. But of the other modification, one more modification that I will add. This track isn't terrible, but uh, I think at some point I'm gonna have to put in, I was thinking about putting in the little screw in studs rather than putting the studs that go all the way through the track. They just screw right into the lugs here. You just take a little drill bit and screw them down halfway and screw them right in. I think they're made by eye grip. So that is the other modification I was I probably will have. But overall, so far, I'm very impressed. Unfortunately, the one thing I bought it in early December, and if you buy them pretty much in November, December time frame, one, the price is going to be higher. So the best time to buy them is at the end of the season, late February, March, April, or during the summertime. And the other reason it's not a good uh, thing to buy them in November or December, all the shops are gonna be loaded up, okay? So it's gonna be really hard to get your sled in to get carbs cleaned or whatever you need to do for it. Um, that's kind of what happened to me. Uh, it was about a month and a half wait time to get this sled into the shop to really get everything tuned up and good to go. So. That's why we're driving out right now. Unfortunately, because I had to wait so long to, to make sure the carbs are cleaned up and everything was good. We got about two feet of ice out here. But uh, that's the snowmobile setup. Hopefully this kind of helps you with ideas. Uh, I've seen a couple videos on snowmobile setups like handmade storage systems. If you can get a snowmobile with the back cage already built in like that and then get the Contico or Contico box, whatever, the, however it's pronounced. Get the tough box on the back. You will be a happy ice fisherman. I guarantee that. I appreciate you watching. Hopefully some of this stuff is useful and you can throw it on your snowmobile for next ice season. We'll see you.